How's it going folks? I'm Des with DesFit and today we're going to be talking about external chest heart rate monitors. Wrist-based heart rate sensors, they're getting better and better, but they still aren't perfect and they're simply some activities that can throw off any wrist-based heart rate sensor like weight training, high intensive interval training, as well as mountain biking. And if you truly want to collect the most accurate heart rate data, a chest heart rate strap is going to be your best bet. There are some other heart rate straps that are cheaper than these for sure. However, some of those also do have some questionable reviews. So what I've done is stuck with these three options that I know are reliable for my testing. And I've actually used all of these as baseline references in different tests and reviews. So in terms of accuracy, there's really gonna be very little difference between these three when they're used properly. So all of these straps use the little pod that transmits the data. The ticker pod is slightly thicker than the other pods, but the ticker also attaches differently than the other pods where the pod will sit flush with the strap where the H9 and the HRM dual pod snap on top of the strap. So in reality, the ticker is just as flush as the H9, and then the HRM dual is just a little bit thicker when all of them are mounted. And this is really minor in the whole scheme of things. And with all of these, it's not going to look like you have an alien coming out of your chest or anything like that. But one advantage that the ticker does have is that it does come in a white version as well as a black version. So if you have clothing that's kind of see-through, that could be a consideration for you. In terms of battery life, all of these will last a long, long time. So for me, and I use these straps like on a daily basis, I usually have to replace the batteries every seven to nine months or so, but I'm guessing for most people, it should be probably more like a year. And in terms of the types of batteries they use, the Wahoo Ticker and the HRM Dual, these use a CR2032 battery, and then the Polar H9 uses a CR2025 battery. However, replacing the battery is different on all of these where the easiest I would say is the H9 where all you do is just pop off this little door. The ticker is pretty easy as well and you just use a coin or something to unscrew the door. The HRM Dual is the most challenging with these four little screws. One advantage with the ticker pod though is that it does have LEDs on the top of the pod which indicate whether it's on, if it's found a device, if it's connected, and even your heartbeat. But don't worry, it doesn't flash the entire time you're working out. It goes away after about 30 seconds to preserve the battery. For connectivity, all of these have Bluetooth as well as Ant Plus. So the advantage of using Ant Plus is that you can connect these to an unlimited amount of Ant Plus devices. So there's not gonna be any difference there. However, with Bluetooth, this is where it's gonna differ. So with a ticker, this has three Bluetooth connections. The HRM Dual has two, and then the H9 only has one. However, with the H9, it also has, supports the five kilohertz protocol, which some gym equipments use. So you'll be able to hook it up with like some compatible treadmills. And with all of these, you can use all those connections all at the same time. So you could use Ant Plus along with Bluetooth. And if you have the H9, you could even use that five kilohertz. The number of Bluetooth connections, this may seem minor at first, but this does come into play in a very specific scenario with the H9. So the H9 only has that one Bluetooth connection. So let's say you're using an online cycling training platform like Zwift with an iPad or an Apple TV, which uses Bluetooth. Well, you would hook up your H9 to that cycling training platform and then all that's left is gonna be Ant Plus. But let's say you have a watch that only supports Bluetooth external sensors like an Apple watch. Well, you won't be able to collect the heart rate from the heart rate strap. So those are the pods, but now let's move on to the straps. And these are actually really important just because most people don't necessarily like wearing chest heart rate straps. So there's gonna be some things to consider such as size, there's gonna be comfort as well as how you attach them. So in terms of size, here's gonna be the specs. And then for how you attach them, the HRM Dual and the Polar H9 use a little hook to attach them. And then both of them have this extra piece of fabric that protects the hook from rubbing against your skin. The ticker is gonna be different where it actually attaches with the pod itself. For comfort, I tend to prefer the Garmin HRM Dual and the Polar H9 a little bit more than the Wahoo Ticker. I just tend to notice the ticker strap a little bit more and it just seems to be not as smooth as the H9 and the HRM Dual. And then in terms of security, this is again gonna be a little bit different where the HRM Dual, it has more grippy bits on the inside where it stays really secure in your chest. The H9 is gonna be pretty secure as well. And then the ticker is probably gonna be last place. And this may not be, seem like that big a deal, but again, if you're gonna be wearing these chest strap rate straps for hours on end, it will make a difference. To get the most accurate results out of a chest heart rate strap, you will want to wet them down before you use them. And that's just going to create a nice good contact with your skin. And that's just how these devices work that use ECG. However, one minor thing that I noticed is that the ticker seems to be just a little bit more sensitive to this, where with the H9 and the HRM Dual, these seem to work pretty good, even if they're bone dry, but the ticker is just a little bit more sensitive where it does need that moisture. But again, best practice is to moisten these straps down before you use them. All of these are gonna be waterproof to a certain degree, so you can swim with them. However, none of these have the ability to store heart rate data on the strap itself, so you won't be able to actually collect that swimming heart rate. And the reason for this is that Bluetooth and Ant Plus, they don't transmit well through the water, so that's why swimming heart rate straps have the ability to store heart rate on the strap itself. And then all of these do have the capability to provide HRV or heart rate variability when paired to a compatible app like the one I used here, which is Elite HRV. 
And then the Polar H9 and the ticker also can pair to the respective native apps to do firmware updates. And with the H9, you also have the options to toggle visibility of the strap, turn on or off gym link, which is the five kilohertz protocol, as well as toggle on or off and plus. And then the HROM Dual, it will also be able to do firmware updates, but this is gonna be only available when you pair it with a compatible Garmin device. So when it comes to choosing one of these straps, all of them will collect accurate heart rate. There's really not gonna be any issues there. However, it really comes down to connectivity as well as comfort, because those things can make a difference in certain situations. Anyhow, if you like the video, don't be shy about hitting that like button down below and also subscribing to the channel for plenty more sports tech videos that are coming soon. In the meantime, have fun out there and we will see you in the next video.